These really are a lovely model and this will certainly get incorporated into a future model that I build. A big hello there to you. It's great to see you. I hope I find you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today we're going to be taking a look at some products from a company called West Hill Wagon Works, which you may remember we did the Hunt Coupling review quite some time ago now as one of their first products. They've expanded their range an awful lot since then and I was lucky enough to catch up with them at the Great Electric Train Show and whilst I was there had a chat with them and just had a look over some of the great products that they had available to buy. Now they use a lot of 3D printing, which is a great method that allows so much in the way of detail to be incorporated into uh, bespoke as well as low production run models. And some of the items that they had on their stand really did catch my eye. And we're gonna be taking a look at some of those uh, today, thanks to the amazing generosity of West Hill Wagon Works, who sent me away with a goodie bag of bits and pieces to have a play around with. Now, towards the end of this video, we're going to have a go at a little project taking one of these products. I've chosen the HAA spare wheel sets and uh, making them up, painting them up, weathering them down and then incorporating them as a wagon load for a Bankman wagon. So really looking forward to seeing how that turns out. But without further ado, in an association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts and available via their UK and European stockists, tramfabrique.nl, come with me and let's take a look at these products from West Hill Wagon Works. At the Great Electric Train Show, I bumped into West Hill Wagon Works. Now, you might remember them as being the home of the Hunt Couplings, which won awards and have proven to be exceptionally popular. But there is much more in their range than just that. And they very, very kindly sent me away with a bag full of goodies from their 3D printed range of bits and pieces. And I've got some of these here to show you. And first off, I'm going to show you some of the figures. And uh, like I said, these are all 3D printed. Uh, we get a lovely picture at the back of uh, how they look when they're separated from the sprue which uh, is a necessity of the printing process to support the resin as it cures. But the level of detail on these is actually really, really nice. Now, one thing I did notice is that uh, these do look to be quite large um, compared with some of the figures uh, that you get through from Pico or Batman scale scenes. And I don't know whether it may be down to them being in HO rather than double O. Uh, but certainly there's some impressive range on these and the finesse of the detail really is incredible. But it's not just figures, we've got all manner of detailing parts. Now these I do particularly like, uh, a pair of air compressors and you can see there the detail actually there on these compressors even down to the belts with air between. Now there's no way that you could realistically do that with injection molding. And what this really does is it provides a really cost effective way of getting some really good high fidelity detailed parts. So I really do like these. They're probably a little bit too modern uh, for the era that I model, but nonetheless, those do look superb got here as well some of the train stop boards and uh, I really like the fact that they they give you a printed out uh, piece of it's like thin card full color really nice printing on that that you can cut these out so you're not trying to paint stop with a very very fine paintbrush I don't think you could ever really do that but it just makes finishing these so much easier and these are of course uh, a really essential part of any modern day depot uh, and rail workshop um, so they're quite a simple little piece there but you get six on a um, I want to call it a sprue but it isn't really a sprue it's just the the base piece from the 3d printer uh, and it's a great opportunity to have some of these uh, detailed bits and pieces 
that I can't really think of any other really good UK orientated source that caters specifically for the UK modeler. Now I know that overseas Noch, Prizer, Fowler are very very good at these sort of uh, levels of detailing uh, parts but in the UK we do seem to have been somewhat more poorly served. Now I'm just looking over at some of the other parts that they've sent me, um, metal waste bins. Um, so anywhere that you're doing any kind of metal working, uh, be it with a lathe or otherwise, then all the swarf can be collected up in here before it's then taken to a proper scrap skip. Uh, it just is a handy receptacle for any of the other bits of junk, maybe old brake blocks, that kind of thing. Um, really, really useful little detail pieces that really come together to make a scene come alive. And I know that Mark Wilson, one of the Monday Clubbers, has made some amazing models, including uh, that uh, Swindon Works. And I do think that uh, part of the reason that that comes alive is because of the amount of this kind of detail that he's been able to add into that model to really make it look the real deal. This I particularly like, that uh, these are the chemical drums, um, quite common everywhere, you can see on the picture on the back there, in blue on palettes. And I think it's a nice touch that they've been 3D printed in a base colour that just makes them a lot easier to paint. Um, pretty much you just need a quick wash over with a top coat and you don't need to worry too much about undercoat because you're not going to get a weird colour bleed through. Um, so that is really nicely thought out and you can see as well I know a lot of people, I'm going to get these out of the pack actually so I can show you them. The finish on these is actually really clear and crisp. We're not getting that very clear stratification. Uh, 3D printing is a technology that's moving on so, so quickly, and already we're seeing vast improvements over those early days. And these really do turn out so, so nice. Look at that, crisp, clear, and they are actually quite solid as well. That is a lovely, 3D print. To get them off the backing they're quite uh, easy actually. I'm just breaking that off. I was going to say you could use a knife or something but they do break quite cleanly off. Uh, these little uh, legs that they're printed as part of. Um, and that also does mean that um, painting these would be really easy because you could paint them on this backing piece and then separate them once dry. Um, so there's a lot of great ideas here. And again, going back to that uh, great use of the base colour resin to help the modeler. This is one of those sort of, um, you can imagine this as a, a snap-on tool chest. You see them in a lot of garages as well. And that's been printed in a red resin uh, with the drawers ajar on there. And this is the sort of thing that you can do with 3D printing that just really would be impossible to do uh, with any other means of injection moulding, say, these things. More to the steam area, we've got some uh, line side gradient signposts. These will certainly end up on Weir Yard. So we've got an assortment there with the different angles, just in painting in a slightly matte white um, and maybe a suggestion of numbers. but. Certainly in later years, you could use these on a modern layout, sort of disappearing into the brambles. Um, and these are certainly something that would work with any layout, going right, right back, probably even to the pre-grouping period. Very, very common sight up and down the railways. Another pack that really tickled my fancy, a pack of four cats. And again, I'm going to get these out of the packet. These do look superb. And these also give rise to, um, you can have a really nice afternoon's modelling project, just very, very carefully painting up these cats. And look at that. They look so alive, don't they? They're, they're not just sort of sat there as a, a, a thing. These have a real character to them in poses that if you've ever watched cats or had a cat, these are very characteristic poses of cats that are um, 
at that one there stretching and probably scratching your carpet um, in front of the fire uh, walking walking along at the top of a fence ready to pounce actually yeah look at the tail up there it's like it's seen something a ball of string shall we say um, there's just so much uh, emotion and uh, an animation to these I really do love those and that is the uh, pack of four cats suitable for any layout from really really oldie worldy through to modern uh, really really nice they've also sent over a filing cabinet again little details like this really do bring a scene alive and actually I'm looking at this and thinking that that would actually have been a really nice addition that I would have put inside one of my signal box interiors so there's loads of great ideas that you can use these products uh, for Another really great idea as well is paint tins and it's not something I've ever particularly seen modelled but you can see there painted up with a sort of metallic silver and then just dip the insides with all manner of glossy looking colours even dribble down the side. It's a great scene not just for in a depot but uh, you could imagine shop fitters, um, people repainting fences, there's so many great cameos you could put these to. And I can imagine that these are certainly something that will fire up a lot of imagination in people's minds when they're thinking about little cameos and projects that they can bring to their own model railway. This pack really caught my eye and these are the oil drum spill palettes and they're in um, a kind of uh, yellow with a dark interior. And it really intrigues me that um, these can, can be made like this as two different parts, two different colours. And it's just a really nice effect. Uh, far too modern for the period that I model. But certainly it just shows what can be achieved with this 3D printing technology. Again, really nice detailed waste bins. I'm going to get these out of the packet so I can do these absolute justice. So we get four in the packet and you can see there these um, they're kind of like those bins that you often get in back alleys behind businesses. So you can imagine these painted a whole variety of colours, uh, blue, uh, black lids, red, I've seen green ones, all manner just depending on which waste company that they belong to and we've also got one there with one of the lids open and you can see modeled inside that trash it's a really great effect I do love these and if you look there that lid is all part of the printing but it's it's got so much you can see there's like an air gap underneath that is incredibly well detailed I do really love these again too modern for the period that I model, but really these are something absolutely special. Um, I like there as well, we've got uh, uh, the lid hanging at an angle, that lid ajar, somebody's really tried to get their money's worth stuffing this bin full, and then another closed one there. Those really are lovely pieces. So I'm just going to put those to one side, and um, there's just a couple more I want to show you. Wall vents for detailing uh, a building, paint these in sort of an aluminium colour or a rusty steel. These really do add something special to things like card kits, um, if you're printing off scale scene buildings, then these are an absolute must for any industrial complex. And it's detailing parts like this that are an invaluable tool to any modeler's scratch build. And then the final two, I'm really impressed with these. Um, these were actually what uh, really caught my eye. I'll, I'll have a look at this one first. But this is the Peak Cab. And again, I'm going to get this out of the packet. This, for me, was one of the highlights. Now, they had on the West Hill Wagon Works uh, stand um, just like a little tiny diorama, probably not that much bigger than the footprint of this, uh, with the Scrap Peak Cab. And... Um, I'm just going to put it there, very reminiscent of Vic Berry, somewhere like Vic Berry Scrapyard. And you can um, remove all of this lattice that's just supporting things whilst they've been printing it. And you've got a full detailed cab interior. You've got this visualisation of what's inside the nose of a peak when the nose has been removed. 
And these would be a great addition to um, a scrapyard scene, uh, a work scene. And as you can see, they're painted and weathered up. They really do look superb. And it's brought alive in my mind the thoughts that I can remember a long time ago, really being taken by the Vic Berry scrapyard with the stacks of, um, of derelict coaches and locomotives, particularly the Type 2 stack with um, 25s, 26s and 27s. And I can imagine a scene around that is now more possible than ever. And you could actually even make the stack as your back scene by buying a load of these and just stacking them side by side and then on top of each other in a kind of pyramid. And that could be your back scene to a scrap scene. These really are a lovely model and this will certainly get incorporated into a future model that I build. It's just too nice to not do something with it. So watch this space. This will reappear on the channel uh, in a later project build, possibly with some of the other uh, bits and pieces that Wettel Wagon Works have very kindly sent over. Now the final piece, which I'm going to actually uh, be doing as a project today, is some HAA wagons and a cradle to go with them. And what I actually want to do with this is just see how easy it is to take these from the uh, 3D printed uh, model here, cutting them, uh, well actually I'm going to paint them first, then cut them out, uh, mount them in the uh, uh, cradle there, and then uh, I've got a wagon here which is one of the uh, Backman ZDV, I think it's tops code was SOV, something like that. Um, but certainly an engineer's liveried version such as this would be a great uh, home for that. And as you can see, it's like it was made for it. I think they're going to be a perfect fit. So with the click of my fingers, I'm going to see what I can do with this. So here we have the finished wheels. They're mounted on their cradle. I've painted them, and if anybody's interested, the colour that I found perfect for doing that is Humbrol Matte number 173. It's sort of like a, a dark earth rust colour. So it's the kind of colour that rust goes when it's very, very old. So this is just in the Humbrol enamel range. And then I went over the top with a combination of two different weathering powders from the Humbrol range. Uh, the wheels got a coating of dark earth, uh, AV0017, and then the cradle got a coat of dark rust, AV0019, and that just really matted things down, uh, made things look nice and grimy in the right sort of way. The wheels themselves are just glued. The glue's still a little bit wet because I've just done it. Uh, I've just used some speed bond just to tack them to the cradle. And then it's just simply a case of matching them up with the appropriate wagon. And just very carefully lift these up. And it uh, just gives me an opportunity to show these to the camera before I drop them into the wagon. And there we have the perfect load for one of these Backman ZDV wagons and that's now going to take pride of place into the sidings on Weir Yard. As that glue dries it will dry completely clear and there you have a perfect load for one of these wagons. So I hope you've enjoyed that little project just showing the kind of results you can get from these West Hill Wagon Works products. If you're interested in buying any of the products that you've seen here today and also explore the entire range, we've got a link in the description box uh, that takes you to West Hill Wagon Works, uh, which is at www.westhillwagonworks.co.uk. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that and found it informative, and we've got that link down below for you just to go and explore the full range. I'd love to hear from you what you think about these products. Are these something that you've used on your layouts? I'd really love to hear how you found them and uh, what your experiences of using these models are. If you've got any hints and tips as well on how to get the best out of finishes in painting these, in weathering these, then do please leave a comment. Love to hear from you and it'd be a great help to other people too to read how you were able to make the very best out of these in your model. Also, don't forget to tickle that like button, share this video, 
and also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Take care. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMRish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.